How's it going, everybody? I'm kind of curious. Uh, this is probably better. Yeah, this is definitely better. I'm wondering to myself, because I was thinking about it, I just saw this little uh, uh, email. And I was wondering, uh, are, movies, are movies box sales, is that an indicator that a movie is good? Because it's, it's kind of weird because I have this bias in this for Black Panther. And it's just like, Black Panther to me is great, culturally speaking, because it's like, it is, as an origin story, I think it's a good origin story, you know? And it tied to the other movie, like, you know, this guy... Uh, I think it was Zemo, you know, he uh, from uh, Winter Soldier. He killed, he was involved in uh, his T'Challa, T'Challa's father's death. And so you is introduced, okay, this is Black Panther. Now we go back and then we realize, okay, T'Challa, sorry, this going to all these moving cars. It, we see that the child, okay, he's due to this person who left him, his father. He's now being reigned as king. And that's because his father, sorry, was snatched from him from uh, by a killer, a brainwashed killer. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I don't want to argue one of them. I just saw a little um, a motorcycle and it sounded like a scooter. It, was, it wasn't as loud as, you know, your typical motorcycle, which reminds me of the Tata Racer 50. But uh, which one, that was one of them I wanted to get. That's here, neither here nor there. But it made me think about um, like it. I thought it was a good start because it blended from the movies, and it was like, okay, his father got taken from him, and because it's a monarchy, he uh, he himself was um, he had to take on the role of um, being the the protector and the king of Wakanda, and is you know he was not ready. But, of course, he's been preparing for this, his whole life, given some monarchy, I'm guessing. So, you know, you got to gotta prepare. But, um, and so it's like him seeing his father's, uh, his father's mistakes and also hit him, his own preparation to be king. And then you see, in the, even in the very beginning, where they had to, um, they... One of their spies, which is another reason why, you know, people think, oh, okay, what about the economy and all this other stuff? It's like, well, they have spies. What about, I don't know. I could think about, I could just think about the infiltration and how that affects their economy, you know. Just saying, you know, what if they're workers and they're using vibranium? It's just a very mythical um, metal that doesn't, maybe doesn't depreciate, maybe doesn't uh, have a half-life or at least a have a very long half-life. Like, what if they're using those, those uh, services and they're just kind of just like with the artifacts in the museum? What if they were um, dirtying it up so they can just be regular tools and they move around so that it's like people don't ever really see that stuff depreciate. They just continue to use them all around. I don't know. I'm just saying. I give you to do all that stuff. But um, my point was just like. It had a very uh, historical and also very cultural tie to me. And people say it's like, it's bad because it's, it's promoted political agenda. And I think what people were saying before, like the Marvel Universe throughout it is coded with political agenda. Captain, um, Captain America Civil War was deep steeped in uh, uh, political agenda. Do we trust our government? That's the, an era of politics and, and law decision making. <laughs> Plenty of superheroes. It just happened to be one that they were disassociated with, or not associated with, not disassociated with. Well, they actively disassociated, disassociated themselves from it because it was it had nothing to do with it. Had nothing to do with Captain America. Even though he was in, he's in part of the comics and what I've seen, like the animated series, he's a part of it. Um, and maybe other people as well. But it's like it's not something that the average Marvel man. Marvel fan could probably connect to, but something person like me, who I've watched darn well, darn near all of the um, Marvel cinematic uh, movies. The movies, sorry, I didn't. I had a word for it, but uh, didn't come out right. Sorry. So, given that, I was just thinking to myself, okay, Black Panther got a, a high box office rating, and there are some people that didn't like it. Some people did. I liked it. 
Did I feel like the ending needed to be established? Uh, yes, but I don't know. I thought it was okay. Um, and given it's the first one, I can see how people were like kind of disappointed. It's like the origin story, so it's like here's. I mean, not really, because he was in the other movie, but this is or origin story, so you have to make it count. You know, like this. This is Black Panther. You know, so he was just fighting like a. Uh, I forget his actual name. Uh, like, was it the? I can't remember. I can't remember. Um, but um, I don't know. I think comic book. From what I've seen from documentaries, his documentaries, videos, YouTube videos on like Killmonger the comic is he seemed really nice. I mean, he seemed like far superior because he was smart and all that stuff. Um, I didn't. I didn't really vibe with Killmonger like that. I thought. I think it was hype. Like just social hype that um that people were just riding on, and that's why he got so much like. Again, um, I've seen Michael B. Jordan play some good films, and this one he was just very angsty and um just upset, angry all the time. He was, and I get it, but it didn't it didn't seem like it came from a place where it was like my history, like 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 kind of like with um T'Challa, you know. But at the same time, I could understand it, given he lived in the culture of America uh, as a minority, as a very poor minority. <clears throat> and given at his time, the social the uh, the uh, social climate was not too pleasant either. He was a youth, so he grew up hating his enemies, grew up learning what his enemies did, why his enemies uh, targeted him as a monster. And he, through the government... Um, grew, learned, and again, so, uh, one thing that kind of got me a little like uh, curious was because um, it, it kind of reminded me of, of, of uh, so Kodak Black, where he, you know, he himself is an immigrant, but he grew up in the culture, so he's basically the person of the culture. He's he's culturally, and is it Harlem? I can't remember. It could have been Harlem, but he's culturally that. So he's culturally American. Even though he's Wakanda. So given all this stuff. I thought this was great. Because it was like. At first I was like. Well should. Because like he has the dots on his body. And it represents the kills he has. So that shows to me. That he has some sort of. Historical significance. Or some historical. Um, um, protection of himself. Some cultural. Uh, um, recognition. So he recognizes his culture. And I'm like, cause I'm like, who, what African American has that? If they're, unless they were actually American and from there, you know. So they're they're culturally black, but they're um, it's like what the difference between nation, nation and ethnicity. So nationally, he could be black, but ethnically, he could be Wakandan. Culturally, he'd be Wakandan too. But taking this white, just taking away all that, it was like I appreciated it fully, and I and I there were some things that I could have just missed, just kind of excused, because you know it comes from not so much my culture but specifically, it is my culture, but it's <clears throat> coming to specifically the cultures of like Harlem and stuff like that and stuff like that. Those aren't really uh, cultures that I've can say I've experienced so much. I have. To, not in, to the point where I'm like I was with them but to the point where it's like if it happened around me then it's like I could believe it happened you know I could believe something similar like that could have happened rather than just dismiss it as politics so basically what I, why, why I say this is because uh, Captain Marvel had a similar box office success and some say that it, ba it was based off people who didn't care about the Marvel comic you the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe, and maybe I don't know, I don't know. Maybe they're like me, where it had a co a very personal significance, and they still liked um, they still like the um the story. When I watched it, I was like, as a hero, this sucks. I mean, I'm sorry, I've I've already expressed it in comments and stuff like that, trying to express it in detail, <coughs> you know, without having to say. Oh, okay, it's because she's a woman. Oh, it's, it's okay, it's because it's promoting feminism. I'm like, there's plenty of films that's done that. Oh, that's cool. Sorry. 
because I saw a little motorcycle and it had a, like a little long front. I thought that was pretty cool. It's orange. Um, and so I always like to salute those bikers, but they are they always kind of doing their thing. Um, but I don't know why. But while I was going back to it, was that, um, as a story, I didn't like it. And at the same time, it, it makes me wonder, like, did I, did the cultural significance replace the story? And was that, am I biased in it? And also, given that, because they say people, there weren't people who were interested at all in the, 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 um, the, the, the uh, cinematic universe. They just watched it because it was all black cast. And again, for me, I'm like, I get it. Historically speaking, I understand where that's coming from. You know, they're not... You know that these people weren't just token characters. They don't. They, they weren't just token characters. So given that, I was pretty thankful to to see a, a video that didn't just have how you doing, didn't just have token characters like token black cats and stuff like that. So, but given this Brie Larson movie is just, I mean, is it proper to say that? I guess so. It sounds like it, and it makes me wonder. Like, okay, given it, it's her and she's lead. Like, I don't think she was... I, I don't know, man. I have a lot to say. Like, is She didn't come across as a Marvel hero to me. I mean, she came across as a Marvel hero, but she didn't come across as a, a, a Marvel hero that existed. She seemed like if she existed in the comic books for feminists, then I'm like, I get it. I could definitely see her being a Marvel comic book hero for feminists. Where it's like, it's so further leaning into that idea that she's strong and she has no hurdles and she's just a very strong feminine feminine is it feminine can tell i don't know what that means but it sounds like fatal which is lethal so i'm gonna guess a lethal female but basically she seemed like just like the female equivalent of superman in every sense of the word and into a detriment where she doesn't really face any challenges she, she's not really facing any problems she's just there you know she's just there being a female superhero without any struggle or conflict which is alien to me because i'm not a superhero nor have i seen any who's infinitely strong and doesn't have any problems that's basically god and so to make brie larson god without the human aspect is is alienation for me and you know they had the, the buddy cop i'm still getting used to that term but um I guess you can't call it that. Like, you know, they were two people. She seemed like it was weird. She seemed like she was a buddy cop without even us being introduced to her as well. And she seemed like a person who had the characteristics of a leader, like a CEO, while being in the position of a um, of an underling, you know? And it was just like, I don't know. It just was weird. They, they they gave her characteristics that she didn't seem to have earned as a as a starting off person in my eyes. You know, like for instance, Tony Stark. He was like he, from what we understand, he's a billionaire, but he gets taken hostage, and so all that he his money can't save him. He's some guy saved him from actually dying by putting some in his chest, and so now <coughs> he's fashioning stuff together. So we understand. Oh, okay, Tony Stark's smart. You know, he's not just a, a pompous person. He's not just big headed and, and got a lot of money for whatever privileged reason. He's smart. So it's like, okay, maybe he got, maybe his status is actually earned because we know he could grab a bunch of scraps and make a suit of armor to get himself out of it. I'm like, who knows how to do that? I don't. So just seeing how he was, how he expressed ingenuity in his time, it was very. It was very enlightening to him as a character. And then when I saw number two, which wasn't all that great, and number three, we see his paranoia after the um, the uh, Age of Ultron. You see, we see him to be a very human being, a human person, human character, human personality. But it's like, he gets scared, even though he's smart, even though he's rich, he goes through stuff where he's apprehensive and he's like, he's scared the earth is gonna get destroyed. He had a memory about his friends dying and stuff and so it's like it's like all this stuff it takes a toll and it's like it makes sense that's a lot of trauma that's a lot of weight mental burden on your shoulders so it's like of course he's gonna freak out of course he's gonna have mental panic attacks because it's um it's uh what do you call that um 
they have the old term is shell shock, but I can't remember the new term. It's uh, PTSD, post traumatic stress disorder. So, it's, so he seemed to have been just as a superhero. And again, we don't think I don't know if people think about that in these comics. Well, I don't know about the comics. Definitely in the comics because they're bad adults. But I don't know if people think about like, okay, if I was in the if I was a human being, but I was smart, and I went through all this stuff, and literal aliens came out the sky, and I had to fight them, and in order to kill him, I was sending a nuke up, and I almost died. Like, that makes sense to me that I'd be like, okay, if they come back, I need something to stop them. So, um, it made me think about that. Like, oh. Yeah, that definitely made me think about that. So, ultimately, at the end of the day, I found his character to be a lot more realistic than this realistic character. And... I think I find Black Panther to be a bit more realistic, even as a king. He's rightfully king, and he's going through troubles that his ancestors have brought, has, have had. I mean, that have uh, followed him. So and so he goes back into this sleep due to like his his father's uh, misworkings, and he's kind of, <laughs> he's talking to his, his his ancestors, where it's like, no, you're wrong, and I gotta make it right, you know. And they say, well, we have our ways. And he's like, your ways are wrong. So, again, it's like, it's him battling the past and fighting for the future. And even though the past, with a symbol of the past, which his father left him, he still has to, not only is willing to burden the, um, the shoulders of his father's past mistakes, but he's also willing to right the wrongs and move forward. So... Um, in that aspect, I think it was great. I think the one billion is well deserved because it's, it's not only talking to, um, and not only talks to people yesterday, but it talks, and it talks to the people culturally relevant, but it talks to the people in the MCU. Why? Because Bucky Burns. Bucky Burns has been, um, snatched up by him, I mean, well, delivered, submitted to him by Captain America. And he given he, he's been given to him because he has superior technology to help him realign his his mind because he was once brainwashed. So he has to fix his mind in order for him not to be further brainwashed. So I'm like, given they're basically a utopia, they're intelligent. They have intelligence. You know, what kind of has all this stuff? Why not submit them to him? Submit this stuff to him. So um. At the end of it. I don't know. I, I think the Brie Larson movie was. I mean, uh, the uh, one Cap Marvel movie was just under undeserved. Um, because if it gave people, I guess that's a problem. Like, okay, it's one thing to have your cake and eat it too, but at least give them the right to eat the cake. You know, don't. You know, at least with good storytelling. At least we got conflict. At least we got highs and lows and emotional resolution conclusion. Because if this was about her trying to prove to people that she's a, despite her being emotional as a human being, as a woman, she should have showed that. She didn't show it. She didn't show how impulsive or emotional she can be and how that's actually a good thing. I guess she did. But she wasn't impulsive. Impulsive is like doing something without, uh, doing something without rational judgment. You know, to feel like you have to do something. And while she did do stuff, it, it didn't feel like this was going to screw up something. It seemed like the plot continuously moved along, you know, while she did what she did. So that's all I got. It's kind of funny. I'm almost, it's almost time to go. But, um, yeah. Uh, this move, this Captain Marvel movie needs a, a better sequel if there is one. So that's all I got. I'll see y'all later.